Fox Sports. We are Tonight, two young fireballers face off. Chris Archer, Henderson Alvarez. Two young righties looking to light up the radar gun and a Miami knife. If you like electricity, if you still believe in the power of the fastball, that certain people possess a special type of magic in their arm, then tonight is for you. Welcome to our T-Mobile Tuesday night baseball game as the Rays are in Miami to take the Marlins on for the second time in as many nights and game two of this four game citrus series which will continue at Tropicana Field tomorrow. Hi everybody and welcome to Miami. I'm Todd Cowles filling in for Dwayne Stats alongside Brian Anderson. The Rays try and snap a seven game losing streak tonight. And they will do so with a very interesting pitching matchup in our Chevron pitching matchup of the evening. We'll have Chris Archer on the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays and the hard thrower from Miami, Henderson Alvarez. These guys have very similar stuff. Archer strikes out a lot more than Alvarez. You can see their numbers on the year. That is our Chevron pitching matchup of the evening. B.A., when you talk about the Ray starter, Chris Archer, very solid lately. Yeah, he has been, Todd. And you know what? The Rays tonight are going to be looking for Chris Archer to set the tone. And the way that he's been pitching lately, he seems to be the right man for the job. You go over his last three starts. They've covered 17 and two-thirds innings. You see he's 1-0, ERA of 1.02. That's just two earned runs in those 17 and two-thirds innings to go along with 23 strikeouts. And he's done them against some high-quality offenses. Angels, Blue Jays, Red Sox, and he'll look to do the same tonight against the powerful Miami Marlins. Yeah, it seems to be getting better and better with each start, and that's a good sign as we begin the month of June. For the Rays, one of the new faces kind of providing a spark in this lineup is the Rays center fielder tonight, Kevin Kiermaier. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what the Rays hope that he gives this lineup tonight. I'll tell you something right now. Nobody plays with more energy than Kevin Kiermaier. He gets it done in the field, a good defender you see with the glove. He may be even better with his arm, as you can see right here with his throw in the Cincinnati series. He's also swung the bat very well. He was swinging well in Durham. He swung the bat well up here for the Rays. 19 at-bats. He has made the most of his opportunities, and he has that high motor, as you can see right here in that inside-the-park home run. He just never shuts it down, and this is the kind of effort that the Rays are looking for, and hopefully Kevin Kiermaier's enthusiasm can rub off on the rest of the lineup, and these guys can get back to Tampa with a win. Looking forward to seeing him run down baseballs in the outfield here an expansive outfield in miami when we come back rich hollenberg will revisit some comments by alex cobb after the game as he is as frustrated as anybody with this seven game losing streak
presented by Toyota. Let's go places. AT&T, mobilizing your world. Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. cha -ching. And by T-Mobile, Tuesday Night Baseball. Minutes away from the first pitch. Time to check in with Rich Hollenberg. Thank you, Todd. As they say, the numbers don't lie. And for the Rays offense, the numbers are simply not pretty. They're 23rd in Major League Baseball in runs scored per game. 3.75 runs a game to be exact. But those numbers drop precipitously when Alex Cobb takes the mound. Look at these numbers. In six starts this season, the Rays only average 1.23 runs per game. That is by far the lowest in Major League Baseball with a minimum of five starts. Cobb clearly frustrated after last night's results. We're going to control what we can control everybody at their own position and um, get better. You know, it's, uh, I think the biggest thing right now is to quit accepting losing. You know, I, I, I can't stand losing, and, you know, I hope, Nobody in this locker room can, will accept this. You know, and it's up to us to turn it around. Nobody's going to come in here and make a, make some magic formula up for us to to fix it. You know, it's it, we all got to look at ourselves and figure it out. And Todd, unfortunately for the Rays, it's not just Alex Cobb who struggles with run support. 26 times this season. The Rays have scored two runs or fewer in their games. Offense is needed in a big way tonight against the Marlins. First pitch, Rays and Marlins from Marlins Park, coming up next. Ninth birthday, get ready in the dugout as the Rays will try and take one game in this road trip and avoid their worst road trip in team history. Here's your starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Kevin Kiermeyer gets the start in center field, leading off Ben Zobris, six for 14 against Henderson Alvarez, bats number two, David DeJesus, three, Evan Longoria back in the cleanup spot, James Loney, five, Matt Joyce back in right field where he hasn't been in a little while. Yunel Escobar hits seventh. Jose Molina catches and hits eighth. And Chris Archer on the mound getting the hit. And taking the mound tonight for the Miami Marlins is going to be right-hander Henderson Alvarez making his 12th start of the season. See already two complete games. Uh, just a 2-3 and three record but an ERA of 2.97. He has been victimized. We talked a little bit last night about a shaky bullpen. His last two starts have covered 12 innings. He's given up no earned runs and has come away with no victories. 
Henderson Alvarez, you see his numbers there without the offensive support. Should have more than two wins with those numbers. Kevin Kiermeyer will lead things off. Hitting coach Derek Shelton has already warned Kiermeyer about what he might see on the first pitch as tonight's first pitch presented by Pinch a Penny is the most unique you'll see this season. And we're underway. <laughs> that, that was, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. And so was the location of that pitch. Not quite where he wanted it. Henderson Alvarez marches to the beat of his own drummer, including that little first pitch sequence that he goes through before every start. Check with the third base umpire, Bill Miller, and he said no swing. So Kiermaier ahead of the count to start this game 2-0. Rays trying to avoid an 0 and 8 road trip that has never happened before in franchise history. And Alvarez, despite that presentation on the first pitch, is behind in the count 3 and 0. Yeah, and this is unusual for him. Does not walk many hitters. He's put himself now back in the count 3 and 1. There's 16 walks in his 66 and two thirds innings. tell you I, I love this decision of Kevin Kiermeyer in the leadoff spot tonight a team that's been struggling looking for a little bit of life a little spark Kiermeyer plays the game very very hard it was a tough call too because Desmond Jennings has good numbers against mm -hmm. Alvarez four for ten with a couple of home runs but in a National League Park Joe does not have the designated hitter to work with so he wanted to get all his lefty outfielders in there and Kiermeyer gets the start in the center after being behind 3-0, Alvarez comes back to strike out Kevin Kiermaier. Well, he comes right back with a couple of 95-mile-an-hour fastballs. And for Alvarez, such good stuff. He does not strike out that many guys. That's a good pitch on the inner half of the plate. Kiermaier just pulled off of it slightly. That little bit of late action got the hand started early. And he just came off that pitch a little bit. Henderson Alvarez with his first strikeout of the game. And that has been something throughout his career he's not been a big strikeout guy no well and you look you know he's a ground ball guy mm -hmm. he got he has good sinking action on that powerful fastball he's very efficient mm -hmm. this year averaging just just over 14.2 pitches an inning that's that's like in the david price range where they just come out and get it done and get it done quick ben zobers the hitter <laughs> takes a called strike and that's 14.2 average is his average since he's been a marlin for two years a little higher with the Blue Jays when he was just cutting his teeth in the big leagues at 15.3 but even that number is very solid for a young pitcher I mean 15 is the benchmark that that's what you all aspire to as a starting pitcher any pitcher really he's able to make this play here by himself uh, Ben's over yeah <laughs> just listen don't risk it if you don't have to don't risk it take it yourself let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of that Miami Marlin defense while we have a chance brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. In the outfield, left to right, you have Christian Yelich, Marcel Ozuna, and Giancarlo Stanton across the infield, third to first. Casey McGee, Adani Echevarria, Ed Lucas, and Garrett Jones. Jeff Mathis will be behind the plate. So you anticipate Alvarez will pound the zone and stay low in the strike zone. That's what makes him tough to hit home runs against. Yeah, he's tough to hit home runs against. That's why he's so efficient. That's why he doesn't strike out many guys. He just comes at you, keeps the ball down, lets the movement do its thing and, and force a, an offense to beat the ball into the ground. And the Rays admittedly are a struggling offense right now, having scored six runs in their last five games. Part of the reason why they are 0-7 on this three-city trip started in Toronto, where Alvarez began his career, moved to Boston, and now finishing up tonight in Miami. And that right there, that's the pitch. I, I mean, that ball comes out of his hand. First of all, it's got juice on it, so you got to make your mind up quick. 96. The Jesus goes to get it, but that late action just takes it right off the barrel of his bat. And that's why he can be so effective. And if he's locked in in the bottom half of the zone, he can be awfully, awfully tough to elevate the ball against. In our half of the plate, called strike. Vic Carapaza behind the dish tonight. One ball and two strikes on David DeJesus. And he's primarily the fastball, the good sinker. He'll change up, slider. A few more sliders to the righties. As you would figure. Right. Arm side. Up the middle, barehanded and deflected to Echevarria, and he makes the play. Maybe not the wisest move by Alvarez, but again, he kind of does his own thing out there on the mound. 
One, two, three inning, and we head to the bottom of the first. Hand and BA, as we look at replay the final out, you said that you've been in this place before. Absolutely, it's instinctive. I mean, as a pitcher, as the ball's coming back towards you, you can't help it. If you feel like you can reach it, you'll try and do that. It may not always be the smartest thing, but you're not thinking about that. You're just thinking about trying to make a play, and you can see him right now messing with that pitching hand. That's, that's unfortunately what can happen. He was able to get through the Rays 1 2 3 in the first. The Rays still struggling in that first inning, 21 games, and just one of those 21 have they scored in the top frame. I, I had a, a ball come back at me in, in a start against the uh, um, A's. Oakland A's one time, and yeah, hit the thumb, cracked it clean across. I on mean, a comebacker. On a comebacker that you just instinctively try to make a play. That's what you're programmed to do. Pitches on the inside corner from Chris. Archer, the first pitch of the evening for the Rays right-hander. Chris with those three wins, the ERA of 4.00, but his last three starts have been absolutely tremendous. 17 and two-thirds innings, no earned runs. I like the fact that as Excuse you were... Me, two earned runs. Two earned runs in his last start. Yep. I like the fact that after uh, we were talking about that in the break, you stayed in the game at least for the rest of that inning I, I with a broken thumb. Well, yeah, I didn't pitch anymore. I just picked him off, and that ended that inning. <laughs> but you still were attempting to continue the inning. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, you this. Brandon Geyer did. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. That's right. And I'll tell you, that was that was pretty uh, games me of uh, games me of him out in center field with that dive and the way that that hand got bent back. But yeah, they messed with the in between innings, and I went out there to try to warm up the next inning. And the first pitch, I couldn't even hold the baseball; mm. it hurt so bad. This pitch is inside to Yelich, and that's one thing Archer will do probably more than anybody on this rotation. In this rotation, is he'll move some feet a little bit. Yeah, well, you know what, and 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 I think that that's something that raised pitchers if they can incorporate it, it, that into their game. You know, pick their spots with it. You don't have to be reckless, but you pick your spots with that. It's very effective. It buys you the outer half of the plate. You don't have to be as fine. Molina comes inside. That pitch just misses. Since says Carapaz, that might have been a strike last night. But it's three and two tonight. Yeah, a lot of borderline pitches right on the edges of the plate were being called. Rays were victimized a number of times by those types of pitches. to walk issued by Chris Archer just the way last night's game started for Alex Cobb. Here's a look at your starting lineups brought to you by your Southern Ford dealers for the visitors. Yelich already has drawn the walk. Ed Lucas back at second base. Sean Carlos Stan hits three. Casey McGee is the cleanup hitter. Garrett Jones five. You've got Marcel Azuna in center field. Adina Echevarria. Jeff Mathis. Henderson Alvarez. Your one through nine for the fish. Here is Ed Lucas had a couple of hits last night against the race starter Alex Cobb. Cobb only gave up 
five hits while he was in there, three of them in the first inning. And Lucas was right in the middle of that first inning rally with a base hit past Evan Longoria in the left field. Yeah, pretty solid approach by Ed Lucas. Good two strike hitter. Just puts the ball in play. He'll shorten up on the swing a little bit. Just one of those guys that's going to battle you. That's why he's a good fit for the two slot. Here's a ground ball. Could be two. They flip it to Escobar for one. He double pumps, and that cost him a double play. Not a clean transition for you now, and the Rays do not turn two on what should have been a double play. Yeah, that, that was tailor-made right there for the Rays. And Chris Archer, you know, as soon as that ball comes off the bat, you're thinking to yourself, boom, I'm going to have two outs, nobody on. you got to give some credit, too, to Christian Yelich in getting down there in a hurry and becoming a distraction near second base. Right here, here's the pitch, and look at Yelich coming in hard. And you see Escobar kind of look down at his legs because Yelich was coming in to chop him. Tried to get out of the way, then make the throws too late. Well, you can't assume a double play, but that's one the Rays wished they would have turned. Defensively, just so solid last year on the infield. And this year, last in the American League in ah. double plays. Yeah, well, and you would not think that the, the Rays middle infield. Watch Yelich right here going in aggressively. And you can see right there, that's what caused the hesitation by Escobar. And play was not able to be completed that's why you love guys that get those good secondary leads and just bust it to second base you just never know when it's going to extend an inning and give you a chance to score runs and now you've got an extra guy on base for the best rbi guy by far in the national league by far 51 runs batted in 37 of those coming in this building 10 of the 16 home runs coming in this building he's been very good at home and this by no stretch is known as a hitter's ballpark Of course, Archer has never faced the Marlins before, so none of these Miami players have had any at-bats against Archer in their career. The only guy on the roster who had some at-bats against Archer was on the disabled list right now, a seven-day DL with a concussion, Jared Saltalamacchia. Those days from being up in Boston, I, but what they will tell these Marlins hitters is you're going to get hard and you're going to get harder. Very hard slider. Of course, the fastball in the mid-'90s. 1-2 pitch just misses. Hit the glove of Molina, but it was just off the plate. 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, but that, that's still, that, that's one of those pitches that can serve a purpose because now you can go to that wipeout slider. That's a perfect setup for that pitch, or you could even double up in there. We saw the Rays pounding Stanton in, in last night's ball game, so obviously that's an area that they feel that they can exploit. I still like that slider, though. I think that's what they're going with <laughs> is Molina. Sets up on the outside. Kind of hung it a little bit and it's fouled away. May have gotten away with one there. Yeah, and that and that's fine. You know that that pitch in off the plate sometimes it will buy you a mistake, middle of the plate away. That's why it can be an effective pitch to move a hitter's feet to pitch in off the plate. They're not as uh, you know eager to lean out over after they see 95 buzzing by the belt buckle. That ball is hit hard to right field, but it's holding up for Matt Joyce, who makes the play. Well, Stanton goes the other way for the second out on a fly ball. Well, let's take a quick look at the Rays' defense brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. In the outfield left to right, you have David DeJesus, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Matt Joyce across the infield third to first. Evan Longoria, Yanel Escobar, Ben Zobrist, and James Loney. Jose Molina will handle the catching duties. I think at some point tonight, we're going to see something special out of Kevin Kiermaier just because of the facility and how much room there is out there. I, I would agree. There is a ton of room. 344 down the left field line, 335 down the right. The gaps are huge. 386 and left, 392 and right. Going out to 418 in center. You better be able to run here. And it may not even be on a, a play he makes. He is... As good as I've seen at backing up his left, his corner outfielders. You know, you know who we, we saw do that very well. We saw it some last year, a little bit this year. Sean Rodriguez. Sean Rodriguez is the best wingman ever. I mean, out in the outfield, he really covers ground and and backs up those guys. Kiermaier cut out of the same mold. Foul tip off of Jose Molina's mask, and Archer had nothing in two. This is not the birthday present Molina was looking for. How many times does he get dinked? This guy gets more foul tips off that face mask and gets wobbled 
than anybody. I mean, you put Hannigan back there, it doesn't happen nearly as much to Hannigan as it does to Jose Molina. He's got like a, I don't know, that head becomes a target. <laughs> Archer got away with one there, too. He's hung a couple sliders in this inning, one to Stanton and one to McGee. And so far, he has lived to talk about it. Sometimes those Stanton mistakes end up 450 feet away. And same with McGee. Yeah. Which, by the way, the, the you know, obviously the All-Star game coming up and you're promoting your players to be elected the All-Star game. The Miami Marlins campaign for Casey McGee is the best I've seen. Vote hashtag hits McGee. Mm. That is so tremendous. In fact, I had to go get myself a pin. There it is. Not hitting there, though. No, he wasn't. Took a call, third strike. Didn't agree with the call, but Chris Archer gets through the first after a leadoff walk. We're scoreless. numbers against Henderson Alvarez all the way up and down Ben Zobris the three doubles how about Evan Longori with three home runs you see Desmond Jennings down there that's what you alluded to earlier he wanted to give Desmond a night off but with this being a National League ballpark as much as Joe Madden likes to make moves you know you're going to see Desmond at some point in some capacity here's Longoria showed some signs last night with a couple of line drives one of them for a hit, the other was a line drive to center field. And I liked his batting practice today. He was turning it loose in BP, and he was crushing some balls out there. Popped the Clevelander a couple of times. Scoreboard has it at 0-2. That would be a tough way to start after one pitch. He lines one up the middle, and that's a base hit. There you go. Sometimes BP translates to the game, and, and Evans looking better or a little, a little better the last couple days. You know, I, I, what I liked is in last night's game, the way he jumped out, and, and solid single to left field. Get the head out and swing with authority. And right there, he takes that pitch that's starting to bore in on him. He does a nice job of staying inside that baseball and lining it right back up the middle. Good start here for the Rays in the second. You saw in our GMC big matchup, the good numbers versus Alvarez. Alvarez has gotten better as his career has gone along, but these are the same Rays hitters. They should, in theory, be able to have some good numbers against them tonight. We'll see if that plays out. Here's James Loney. Loney on the ground foul. Well, how about this? Against the Rays in his career, we saw those numbers, and you know what that leads to? That leads to bad numbers overall. Five starts. He's 0-5 with an ERA of 6.28 against the Rays. He's given up seven home runs. That's not something that he does a whole lot of. No. You see the numbers right there. They have had his number, be it in a Toronto uniform or a Marlin uniform. Since the start of last year, nobody has a lower home run per nine inning rate in the major leagues than Alvarez as a ball is somehow loose around first base. It did not look official. Where did that come from? 
Yeah, it did not. It did not look official. There was a sheen to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those young boys are going to learn at some point that you're allowed to keep foul balls. Yes, you did. This is. Foul ball. Not the amateur rank. They are no longer in possession of the ball, though. Mom's making sure she's got it. There's a called strike. <laughs> James Loney leads the team in RBIs, coming in with 28. But yes, you are right about the home runs. The Rays hitting home runs against Alvarez, a guy who gives up 0.32 home runs per nine innings. The best of any major league starter. I don't know if you could have put him in a better position either coming here with right. this ballpark. Here's a ball up the middle and pass to diving Echeverria. Rays have two hits in this inning. And that matches the number of hits that Alvarez has given up in his last two interleague starts combined. Yeah, and he's been so very good in interleague since coming over here to Miami. One of them being a no hitter last September and then also a shutout against the Mariners in mid April this year. But the Rays with two base hits right back up the middle. That's a. James Loney special. He uses the whole field so well with that up the middle approach. So we showed you earlier Matt Joyce's numbers against Alvarez. Overall, five for 13, but four for his last eight, including a double in his last at bat against Alvarez what the Rays hitters want to do and what they've been actually very good at doing is see the ball up on Alvarez force him up into the zone you do not want to play his game and chase that hard sinker that's down there's a good take by Joyce and really that's the one thing Matt's done better this year than at any point in his career not leaving the zone yeah and that you know the more that you can divine your strike zone the better chance that you're going to have for success as a hitter and that is a good take because that pitch you're probably not going to be able to elevate. It's not close enough to you. You know, down and into a lefty's one thing. Down middle, that's where you start to get into ground ball double play territory. 3-0 and oh on Joyce. Joyce for a while was the leader in the major leagues this year at O swing percentage. And it has nothing to do with the rest of Estrada. The O swing percentage is the amount of times you leave the zone and swing at a pitch that is outside the strike zone. He was number one for a while. He's currently now number seven in the big leagues at 19.6, but that's a full two percentage points better than his career average. 3 0 pitch, there's a strike. And I think that's what helped him get off to such a good start. And he's been not quite as good as he was early, earlier in the year. That percentage has gone up a little bit, but still one of the best in the big leagues as we're beyond the one third point of the season. One pitch is now full count as he swings through that one. Well, you remember he fell behind Kiermaier 3 0 before coming back to get him on strikes. And here was a good fastball down in the zone. You see that late action take it right to the middle of the plate. That's some that's what that's why you're surprised that he doesn't strike out more guys. Well, because he, I know they put it in play a lot, so he's got they do. He hit he can get the swing and miss when he needs it, though. Yeah, because a lot of guys are gonna shorten up on him. He doesn't have that wipe out breaking ball to go along with it. There he goes. Just we're talking about not leaving the zone. He left the zone there and strikes out. Yes, he did. I, I mean, he had that count 3-0 and in his favor. Alvarez got back in it with a strike and two swinging strikes to put him away. But so you, here's where that that's the late movement that gets you because Matt Joyce sees fastball down and in. Fastball down and into lefties. We see those balls get rocketed out of here. And that one to the late motion just or late movement took it right underneath the swing. And this is where it's been frustrating for the race because now that makes them over their last 20 with with runners in, in scoring position after that strikeout. And, and this is where they've struggled in, in the last you know five games where they've scored six runs. They've hit 121 and falling just have not been able to get the big hit when the opportunity has presented itself. Well, obviously, it's been one of the worst road trips of franchise history and on the season. The offense just has not been there on the road. No. Less than three runs a game. Yeah. And that, that, I mean, that's tough to win. That is just tough to win scoring less than three runs a game anywhere. Home, road, they're doing a better job at home. 
And the road trip got off to a promising start, and that's you know some of the comments that Evan Longoria made talking about just the facets of the game not playing very well and not playing well together. Broken bat towards second. Echevarria takes it himself and turns the double play. So the Marlins get out of a first and second nobody out situation with a strikeout and a double play. We head to the bottom of the second, and we're still scoreless in Miami. Timeless moment. We go back to 1996. A youthful Rick Vaughn there addressing the kids. 24 minor league free agents. This was before the very first June draft. And they had the expansion Devil Rays mini camp, their first ever in Rays history, at Huggins Stengel Complex in St. Pete. They worked out in front of the Tampa Bay coaching staff at the time. Tom Foley, who's now the Rays third base coach, at that point of his career was the team's field coordinator. There is Bo. Asked him about it before the game, and he had very limited memories of that day. <laughs> but he said, I kind of remember, but yeah, I can't give you much. I said, thanks, Bo. But uh, Tom Foley has been one of the, hey, talk about a guy who's who's been around. Seen it all. With the franchise. He has seen it all. Been through how many managerial changes. He's been through the lows, the highs right now, the struggles. And you can see him motioning Woo! the infield there because the Rays want to play three on the right side against Garrett Jones to lead off the inning. Bo is in charge of motioning the infield defense and making sure they're in the right spots. And right there, the picket fence. Well, the Rays, like so many other teams, are so active. Actually, the Rays really got things started as far as the shift goes. And everybody else jumping right on board to the fact that, you know, the Rays aren't even the team that runs out the most. They do it quite a bit, but every team very active in that regard. Other way in the air, pretty well hit. The Jesus on the move, and he makes the play. And that, about that is the one thing that you need to have in this ballpark. We alluded to it earlier with Kiermaier maybe being a, a chance to see something special out of him. You've got to have outfielders that can cover some ground, at least two of the three. You can shade and help out the third guy if he's not quite as fleet of foot. But you've got to be able to move to go catch balls here. It plays big, and DeJesus gets to this rather easily. The one thing about DeJesus, even though he's been DHing a lot, and he seems to be comfortable in that role, when he gets his shots in the outfield, he was, he's still getting pretty good jumps. It's not like the time on the bench is hurting his outfield play. No. Well, you know what? This is a testament to his work ethic. You know, these guys come out every day, and they're working, you know, out in the field, taking ground balls, taking fly balls in the outfield, playing balls off the wall, taking balls off of live VP. You know, so you get the, the, the feeling of a real ball being hit and not just a fungo. So, you know, you continue to work at it because you never know when your number is going to be called or when you're going to be out there. 
and then it pays off. And he's a, he's a good veteran outfielder that's had experience playing different positions. So, you know, he puts himself in a ready position, and when the ball comes off the bat, that first step is usually pretty good. Marcel Azuna batting with one out and nobody on. We mentioned De Jesus hasn't been out there very much. Only his second outfield start in the last month. His last one came on the last homestand. And he told Joe Madden on his way out, hey, I get to play the full game today. <laughs> hey, most guys prefer it. That, that's why it, it's been pretty special to see what he's done in that DH role. Because he's used to being out in the field all the time. But he's taken to the designated hitter role better than you would assume. But at the same time, most guys, they want to be out there playing on both ends. Two and two, the count to Azuna. There he goes with the slider, gets him the chase. Chris Archer has his second strikeout of the night. Well, that's what Chris Archer, you know, when he pitches ahead in the count, he can get you to expand with pitches like this. That ball looks like it's just above the knees, about two-thirds of the way to the plate, and then just dives into no man's land, and Ozuna, no chance. Archer, after a leadoff walk, has retired five in a row. Now he deals with the shortstop at Danny Echeverria for the Miami Marlins. Ground ball towards Longoria. And he makes the play on one hop. And the Rays have a 1 2 3 inning. So we head to the third. So far, we are scoreless. Corliss through the first couple of innings. Hey, Joe Madden Summer Social is coming right around the corner. Tickets go on sale Tuesday, June 10th during the Rays broadcast auction. It's your chance to mix and mingle with your favorite Rays players and coaches at this exclusive event on Sunday, August 17th. Go to RaysBaseball.com slash broadcast auction for more information. There are a couple of events every year where you can really get to hang out with the team, get to talk with the guys. That is one of them. It's definitely one of the more enjoyable events, kind of a casual atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you go up there and you start to mingle. You're like, okay, I'm going to make one pass. I'm going to I'm going to head towards the back, and I'm going to turn and I'm going to head towards the front. And eventually, usually about a third of the way in, you get pinned down, and then you're there for a while, and you get to talk, tell stories. It really is. It turns out to be a lot of fun every single year. Here's the birthday boy. Well, at the plate, Jose Molina. Celebrating his 39th birthday today said he had a great day said this one pretty deep in the air But center field is so massive here in Miami and Ozuna has the play There are a couple there are a couple people at least one couple that drives like four hours every yeah day. Just for that. Yes. They, they sometimes watch the game. They sometimes get to the game late, but they are there for the summer social. 
it's up close and personal, yep. like you said. I mean, it is a very intimate setting. And like I said, it, it turns out to be a lot of fun. It's one of those things that you go to and you end up thinking that as you leave, that you have more fun than the actual fans who came. Chris Archer, 0 for 4 in his career as a hitter. Takes a pretty good rip there. Archer's not big on the pitcher's batting practice. Doesn't really like hitting that much, doesn't enjoy it like the other guys. In fact, he works more on his base running than his hitting. Does he understand that you have to hit to get out there? I mean, that's a big part of being on the bases is hitting. Well, maybe we need to give, give a little advice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> He's got an open stance, at least to start. That is great. I don't like hitting so much, but I love the base run. Well, he, he has pinch run before. You can't steal first. He has pinch run before. They, the pinch running. And that's the thing. He How about that? Easy. Right back at the pitcher. That would have been a base hit if it didn't hit Alvarez. It would have. They had him played straight up. That ball gets by him. It's going to bound into center field. And then he gets to do what he really loves, and that's run those bases. That's where playing in the National League, it, it's, it's the best. It really is. If you love the game of baseball in its purest form, Chris Archer plays in the National League. He'd get to pinch run a lot. That was the one thing that I loved doing that out in Arizona was the chance that, you know, every day, even if I wasn't starting that day, have the plastic spikes on because if they needed a base runner late, didn't want to waste a position player, you were going to get the call. And it really kept you in the game. It was exciting. You get to do something you don't normally get to. Alex Cobb yesterday, first at bat sharp ground ball mm -hmm. that was a pretty sharp ground ball right back to the pitcher hey the first two turns or the first three innings first turn through the Rays lineup the two hardest hit balls were Longoria and Cobb that's right and today might be Longoria Loney and Archer 2-0 pitch Kiermaier bounces and foul Kevin Kiermaier let off this game struck out after getting ahead of the count 3-0 Alvarez has been able to come from behind a couple of times after getting behind in the count once to Matt Joyce. Kevin Kiermaier to lead off the game. Here's a ball ripped to right field. This could be extra bases. Stanton's going to play it off the wall. Watch Kiermaier go. He's thinking three. And the relay throw will not even be close. Kevin Kiermaier with a two-out triple. This is why Joe Madden wanted him in the lineup tonight. A spark, the energy, the enthusiasm. He's not going to be fooled again by the fastball. And this one has a little bit more elevation, and he's able to hammer it. But that's what he does. Kiermaier, his approach out of the box is, I'm going to run until you force me to stop. I'm not going to assume anything. I am going to go until you tell me that you're going you're gonna to get me. Well, guess what? Into third. Easy. Easy. Now the Rays could use a little two-out magic as Ben Zobers will be the hitter. Zobers grounded out back to the pitcher his first time up. Alvarez took the play himself. Want to know the count to Ben. So coming back from that dislocated thumb. Activated on this road trip. Pitches foul behind him. It's one and one. Here's another opportunity for the Rays. With that last inning, first and second, nobody out. A 3-0 count on Matt Joyce, and they raised the it. We're not able to get anything out of it. And here, a little two-out action. Another chance. On the ground, Echeverria. And the Rays now 0 for their last 22 with runners in scoring position. We head to the bottom of the third, and it's no score.
Sun Sports, Kevin Kiermeyer with a triple in the top of the third. Now taken to the outfield as the Marlins get ready to come up in the bottom of the third. And it's always good to welcome another member of our Sun Sports TV family to this broadcast, Captain Rick Murphy of Florida Insider Fishing Report. Good to see you. Good to see you, Rich. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Uh, we were just talking before we came on the air. This man has been on TV longer than The Simpsons has been on TV, and you've been on with the Florida Insider Fishing Report for, what, the last 10 years? Yes, sir, you're right. You know, Sportsman's Adventures is where we started with Sun Sports, and that was over 20 years ago. We're filming our 21st season, so in 2015, we're really excited about showing our 21st season. And a lot of times they air right after Ray's show, Ray's Live. Tell us what we have coming up to look forward to. Well, I got this week, we got the uh, trout is the theme species, a very popular fish in Tampa Bay, also in the St. Pete area. And, you know, my good buddy, as well as my partner in the Redfish Tours, Jeff Page, is from Sarasota. They're all, the, all these guys are huge Rays fans. And what's so neat about all our local captains is amongst us all, we have this little deal about, is it gonna be Marlins, is it gonna be Rays, or is it gonna be the Heat, is it gonna be the Magic? And that's what's so cool about Sun Sports is, you know, you guys have it all, one-stop shop. For people who might not have caught your show yet, from the novice to the expert, what can they expect? Well, that's a great question, and realistically, what we try to do is, each week our message changed this week we're talking about trout next week we're going to talk about bait fishing and everybody from the expert to even the most novice person can learn something in that 90 minutes of the chevy florida insider fisher report so the idea is that each guy or each week we put together a basic plan or forecast as to what people can look forward to what's hot in each one of their prospective regions so that when they go out on saturday and sunday they got a great game plan and don't waste any gas great to catch up with you captain rick i will speak for myself as well as my broadcast partners todd and ba we need a guy like this we need all the help we can get when we get on the water no doubt rich i have no idea what i'm doing on the water <laughs> i i other than having fun but fishing i have no idea get in line get but in line can you imagine doing that for a living a uh, captain rick murphy i'm not a fisherman but if you love fishing yeah and you do that every day of your life if, as much as you want pretty cool it, 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 very cool well it's some of the fishing shows that you can watch starting with his and then it just move yeah. right along i mean there's lots of them out there and they're all they have all have their own uniqueness and it, it is pretty an interesting life to say the least Henderson Alvarez, good hitting pitcher. Up there with one out and nobody on. Career 245 hitter. That is a big hack for anybody, especially for a pitcher. And he spun out of his wheels there. Yeah, he did. He, he got a fastball to his liking. And watch this swing. <laughs> and, and, he, and he's going all Will Myers, too. No batting gloves. Yeah, how about that for a pitcher? For a pitcher. This guy's fun to watch. <laughs> and Chris Archer, I love that right there. You want to take a swing at that fastball? Why don't you deal with this slider? Hey, you can celebrate Father's Day early with the Rays when they take on the Mariners on Sunday, June 8th. The first 10,000 fans, 14 and older, get a James Loney grill set presented by KM. Get your tickets now at RaysBaseball.com or call 888-FAN-RAYS. Top of the order, Christian Yelich. Since you and I stink at fishing, yeah. Captain Rick goes out, yeah. brings in a bounty. Grill him up. James Loney grill set. Mm -hmm. We go to town. See where you're going. I heard the inside the race, James Loney was really good. I haven't seen it yet because we were on the road when it debuted. You can't fish for those. That would be a breach of contract. Yeah, management would tend to frown upon that. Yeah, because it would things. be rather easy. There's only so far they can go. Fish in a barrel. <laughs> but I like uh, I like the Captain Rick Murphy job. I, I think there's a few guys in the clubhouse that, if they were given a private poll, would elect to take his job if they could get paid the same as for what they do in the, in a baseball uniform. Hey, we got guys that we go on road trips. There's a day off. Guess where they're heading? In Boston. Take yes. Would take it, the boat. Go fishing when it's like 45 on the water. I did that one time, actually did it in Florida, off the coast, went out 25 miles, the guy cut the engine, the front end went down, it came back up, and I was done. <laughs> right there, done, done. I mean, tapped out. 2-2 two, two pitches. So sick. That was it. That was it. You didn't take anything. 
Now, I went up and laid on the top of the boat, and just as I started to feel better, we're heading on our way back in. I've heard it's the worst feeling. Fortunately, fortunately, I have not dealt with seasickness. But I heard it's not fun. It's the same feeling as a, as a really bad late night, except you remember this one. Three and two, and Chris Archer strikes out the side. The fish go down in order, and there's more fish. We've got themes going on. We'll be back with more after this. Top of the fourth inning, Braves and Marlins, a view of the city from the water. That looks like a pretty smooth ride right there. I'm queasy. No, you're not. That is solid. Look at that. That is a great view, though. Braves came in with all white doing the Miami Vice thing. It's become a tradition for Joe Madden on these trips to Miami. David DeJesus will lead things off for the Rays in the fourth. Takes a pitch from Henderson Alvarez for ball one. And every year I blow it. Every year I blow it. You talk a big game. I do talk a big game, and I've got big plans and a great idea. It would be the best white outfit it would. of all time. Epic. Grounded into the Rays' dugout and scatters the camera crew a little bit. I, I saw I saw one of them, the, the jacket that I was looking at, and recently sold at auction. I believe it was around five thousand dollars do you want to give away there's, what you're looking there, at or is one gonna... of three of them well I, I, yeah i'll tell you if you want to know the white outfit that i'm gunning for just go watch the paradise city video by guns and roses check out the axel rose all white there's a ball hit well the opposite way david de jesus with a base hit to left takes the turn and will hold on as yelich gets the ball back in so the rays have a leadoff base runner see if they can do something with it here in the fourth they were unable to do anything with first and second nobody out in the second Time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Sunsports Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in our broadcast later on in the game. And this, as always, is brought to you by AT&T, the AT&T Fan Photo. So leadoff base runner for the Rays, David DeJesus. Here's Evan Longori. He let off the second with a base hit. And as B.A. chronicled earlier, the Rays had first and second that inning in a 3-0 count and ended up with a strikeout and a double play. And that's just how things have been going for this offense, unfortunately, over the last five games. Just have not been able to get the big hit. Another good start here to Hayes, who's taking that ball the other way. You're getting Longori to the plate. He's been swinging the bat better, more powerful. There goes to Jesus. Swing and a miss. The throw is in time as to Jesus is thrown out. Ray's trying to get something going, putting the runner in motion. Well, and you know what? A good pitch by Alvarez to get the swing and a miss. Not a good pitch for Jeff Mathis to handle. A breaking ball down, and look how quickly 
he's able to get it from glove to hand to second base. Last year, Alvarez in 17 starts only allowed two stolen bases. The catching duo primarily last year, and you mentioned how they struggled offensively, uh, Rob Brantley and Jeff Mathis. Obviously, this year they went for more offense behind the dish. Mm -hmm. And so far, Alvarez has allowed five stolen bases, but Mathis is one of those guys, Brantley one of those guys that are, they're going to be tough to run on. Yeah, I mean, good catch and throw guys. Not much with the stick, but good catch and throw guys. And Todd, let's just look at it this way. In, in, in Henderson Alvarez, his first 58 starts of his career, he gave up five stolen bases. In his 11 this year, he's given up five. What's the main difference? Well, this year, as he picks up a strike out there on Evan Longoria, he's got, for the most part, Salta Lamacchia has been the guy behind the dish. His pitch right here just glides back across the middle of the plate. Evan not able to pull the trigger. And think about where Salta Lamacchia was last year. He was in Boston. Right. Boston gave up a ton of stolen bases. They were one of the easiest, if not the easiest, team to run on. So teams have taken that into account. So the five stolen bases this year on Alvarez is not so much an indictment of him. They're running more on the catching situation. He's usually been pretty good. There is that slow breaking ball. It was clocked at 60 miles an hour. There are people right now in the Howard Franklin going 10 miles faster than that. And that fell in for a strike. James Loney's like, all right. I mean, he, he will go... He's thrown an Ephus pitch or two in his career, but that was as slow as a curveball as he will throw. He goes about 74 with his curveball. That was 60. For a strike. Oh, yeah. Dropped it in right there. Here's a ball hit hard to right field. Stanton on the move, though, to his left, and the Rays can't catch a break. So a leadoff base runner is wiped out, then a line drive to end the inning, and the Rays' offensive struggles continue. Four nights ago, a very interesting evening between the Rays and the Red Sox. David Ortiz hit in his first at bat of the year against David Price. And then, after another hit batsman later, after Mike Harp was hit, Evan Longoria had that pitch sail behind him and over his head by Brandon Workman. Our Chevy Division storyline Major League Baseball has suspended Brandon Workman for six games, find him an undisclosed amount for that pitch around Evan Longoria's head. Workman appealing the suspension. And David Price, much to the chagrin of Big Poppy, does not get any time. And uh, I, think, and, and I, think that's, I think that's accurate. I think yeah. that's absolutely fair. That's the key. He intentionally throwing. David Price said he was just establishing his fastball in the inner part of the play. you got to pitch him in. And you can't go back and recreate history. They don't throw him out during the game, either for hitting Ortiz or hitting Carp. Right. Right. So you can't go back and recreate and say, well, now we do think he regardless of what you want to believe and obviously the Boston side can believe one thing and yeah whatever uh, you know, he can't go back and change what the umpires ruled on the field listen he, he went after David Ortiz we, we, we all know that 
the, the Mike Carp in that situation, he's pitching him in. Right. That's how he's pitched Mike Carp in the past. That one got away from him. It caught him on the arm. Of course, you know, a lot of guys do get thrown out in that situation. Anytime you, you clip somebody after a warning, you, a lot of times you go. But the umpire said, listen, we have made the decision that that was not his intent, so he stays in the game. Okay, fine. And now Wordman. Well, I, you underline intentionally throwing. I think I could have, you could also circle towards the head area. Oh, yeah. Towards, I mean, if he hits him in the hip, he's not sus suspended right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely right. Here's a ball into right field, and that's going to drop. Not well hit by Lucas. So Ed Lucas continues to be a little bit of a thorn in the race side. He had two hits in last night's game. Playing second base for Derek Dietrich. He's getting a couple of days of rest. Kind of a mental breather for him, and he'll probably play in that race series, either at second or maybe DH at Tropicana Field. So oh, he's been struggling with the glove. Yeah, eight errors. Yep. Had a big one against Atlanta on Sunday. Here's Giancarlo Stanton. Flied out to right his first time up. Last night had an infield hit, a walk, and grounded out to third. This ball gets away from Lena, but not that far away. That hit by Luke is the first hit for the Marlins tonight. Archer has walked one and allowed that little flare single to right. One and one the count. Back standing off the plate. Well, we've seen raised pitchers just the second game of this series, but you know, Chris Archer is one of those hitters. He's off to a good start. He's got good power numbers, and you know that the Rays pitching staff has highlighted him as the guy that we cannot let beat us. When they typically do that, they come up with a pretty good game plan on how to neutralize a hitter like that. Saw that outfield alignment. That's as deep as the Rays play anybody. Yeah. Well, and this is a big outfield, and these guys are back near the warning track, and you know that's the way you got to play him. We said last night five of those 16 home runs have traveled at least 450 feet there's one that we may show before this series is over that he hit over the Budweiser landing area there's a ball towards Escobar that had a little bit of knuckleball action it started at Escobar's right and ended up to the second base side of him a little action on that pitch as it broke the bat of Giancarlo Stanton and that's exactly what Escobar is saying right there. A little sink, a little fade action. I mean, he, he generates bat speed and ball off the bat speed like no other player in the game. No, the, the numbers that have been thrown around these parts, I know that I think that the home run that I can go back to, I don't even remember the home run, but I remember seeing one off the bat at a little bit over 106 miles an hour, like 106.5, 1068. That is the hardest that I've ever seen as far as with the hit track, you know, and all that stuff. And I've heard that um, around here, that number goes way north in the stand. 122.8. That, that's almost... Uh, it, well, it's it, hard to imagine. It is hard to imagine because we've seen a lot of balls hit very hard. This could be the end of the inning. Escobar, Zobris, and they make the turn this time. And Chris Archer, after a leadoff base hit, gets Stanton and McGee to end the inning. So we head to the fifth. Scoreless between the Rays and the Marlins.
It's Marlins with one in tonight's game at all season long. Tires Plus will donate $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Rays home run hit during a televised Sun Sports game. Rays have Matt Joyce leading things off against Henderson Alvarez. Joyce does have five career hits against Alvarez, but no home runs, does have one double. The guy with the home runs against Alvarez is Evan Longoria. He's got three bombs against him and ten at bats coming into tonight. Well, that's the swing that you want to start seeing more from Evan Longoria. We saw him with a nice line drive up the middle in his first at bat. We saw him turn on a ball, hit it sharply into left field. In last night's game. In the air to left. Yelich puts it away. Rays fans don't miss tomorrow's Wednesday night showdown presented by Mazda. The Rays will take on the Marlins at their place, Tropicana Field. We started at 6.30 with our Rays live pregame show. Right here on Sun Sports, David Price and Tom Kohler in your pitching matchup. It's also a Web Wednesday. Get your questions ready for Dwayne and BA. By the way, people on social media get we're a family. Everybody's well, a little concerned. There's nothing to worry about. We all get scheduled days off. Dwayne is absolutely fine, probably enjoying his time right now mm -hmm. somewhere close to the Gulf of Mexico, and he will be ready and ready and, and raring to go for our Web Wednesday tomorrow with you. <laughs> Web Wednesdays are always fun, as long as the questions roll in. We, you know what, though? This year, we, we the, the way that the games have played themselves out, we haven't gotten to many. Sometimes the games have superseded the they questions. They have. Yeah. They have. But Dwayne's fine. BA's going to be fine when he gets his time off. I'll be fine when I get my time you off. You don't get time yeah, off. Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah, sure. We all do. I don't think you do. Yeah. I, I think that you game we'll, it we'll for see one, how, we'll 150 see. plus. <laughs> we'll see. Plus pregame. They're, they, people might get tired of me. Counts two and one. On Yunel Escobar, he hit into a double play his first time up when he broke his back. These people need to look at themselves in the mirror. There's a line drive base hit in the left. Rays have five hits. They've hit a Alvarez a little bit tonight, but they just haven't been able to put anything together. A couple hits in the second, two out triple the third. That Stolen base attempt wipes out a hit in the fourth. That has been the problem. Look at Escobar. This. Escobar tried to steal when. The play wasn't even, the pitcher wasn't even on the mound. He's saying we need a challenge. He was running when Alvarez was motioning around the, you know, not leaving the bag. He was running when Alvarez wasn't even paying attention. And then Lucas at the last minute went in to take the throw and Escobar saying I'm safe. Trying to catch him napping right here. A base hit into left field. Marlins are going to go ahead and throw it in and play this pretty routine. He's not going. Flip it to the pitcher. And as he's walking back and everybody's not paying attention, watch Escobar. That is so gutsy. So gutsy. And he may have gotten in there. He was adamant that he got in there. The throw's high. Can't oh, tell. Boy. You can't tell him. That's what you're afraid of. Because he's called out on the field, unless there's a more definitive angle, they could come back and say, you know what? Inconclusive play stands. That's that's the fear for the raise end. It certainly looked like he got in there that the tag may not have been applied, but it was tough to tell. And here's the other issue with that play. Because it was such an unorthodox play, you probably don't have every camera on him running there. That's exactly right. Because you're right. It's not like, you know, that he's going for a double, trying to stretch a single to a double, and so all cameras are focused. You have that one look. You don't know how many more there are. But that one right there, inconclusive at best. And the glove obviously is on the other side of the camera. So you, so you can't tell where he gets them, if he gets them. And you can't assume that he did touch them. And you got to go end up going with the call on the field. So we'll see if they've got another look at it. So far, that's the only angle we have seen. They continue to look to see if there are any other angles. But yeah, you, you've got a single. Uni was taking his shin guard off, handing it to George Hendrick at first base. That's usually the end of the play. Usually. <laughs> you know, Escobar trying to spark this offense then says, you know what? Everybody's asleep out here. 
I'm going to make a break for it. You know what? The only reason that there was a throw is because Henderson Alvarez was looking back at second base to see who had the bag for a potential double play. That's Except there's two outs. And so then he must have been just looking back at the bag for who knows what. And but they, he was looking back there. Because he wants to see who's covering. Well, watch right here. Well, you can't really tell there. Oh, so and, close. And, and it's still that. Yeah. Can it, you can you tell from there? I think Uni has a point, but I don't think he has any visual evidence to, to but, overturn it. Yeah. But again, you go back to Alvarez. You see that that's you just don't know to that scrape the back of his elbow. But here this is all happening with one out and Alvarez is looking back at the middle infielders to see who was going to be covering. And that's when he realized he needed to make the throw. Uni can't believe it. Well, because but he knows he, he probably wasn't touched, but he doesn't have a camera angle to prove it. That's right. That is right. Well, an interesting try by Escobar with a team that's been flat offensively. Stands. It was not confirmed, and that's where we thought it would end up. Yeah, there, there just wasn't anything, right? It's got to be clear and convincing. That is the margin of proof. Against Escobar. Second time the Rays have been caught stealing tonight. That was a little more of the strange unorthodox variety. Here's a sharp ground ball past McGee in the left field. So Jose Molina with a base hit on his birthday, two out base runner. So and I'm going to tell you something. This, now let's go back to that Escobar play. Watch Henderson Alvarez. Okay, here's the base hit. They throw it in. Escobar back at first base taking off his equipment. Watch Henderson Alvarez. This is the only way that he picked up. He's walking back to the mound now thinking, okay, who's got the bag on a double play? Gets up there, he looks back, who's got it, and that's the only reason he was able to make that play. That is interesting. I love the fact that as soon as he handed off his glove, his batting glove, he took off. He had that in his mind. If they're going to continue to saunter back to their positions, I'm going. Interesting. 1-0 the count to Chris Archer. Hit a smash back to the pitcher his first time up. That one is a little soft one hopper. And he's retired. So the Rays with two hits in the inning. Nothing to show for it. Scoreless heading to the bottom of the fifth. You know, Escobar with an interesting base running ploy in the top half of the fifth inning. We're back for the bottom of the fifth. 
Don't forget the Rays Summer Concert Series returns. Be part of the first concert this year when Weezer takes the stage after the Rays take on the Mariners on Saturday. This Saturday, they'll play hits like Say It Ain't So, Pork and Beans, and Island in the Sun. The concert is free with the purchase of that game's ticket. Get your tickets now at RaysBaseball.com slash concerts or call 888-FAN-RAYS. I think I might go to this one and stay. Because I of the songs that they list in the promo, I like some other ones that aren't even on there. Well, then there you go. That's that's usually the key for me. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to get, is it five or six songs? I know I, there's at least two or three I like other than the ones on the promo. So if you can get to the five song threshold, yeah. then that means you go. I'm good. I know and like at least five that they're going to play. I like Buddy Holly. That's not on the promo. Yeah, I love the video. Beverly Hills. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, that's a good one. And uh, the sweater song. Sweater song. I'm done. Yep. Yeah, I like them. But, yeah, I did see the video after you talked about it. I did go and watch it today yeah. on YouTube. Interesting. Pretty cool. Al, Big Al, Al Molinari. Yeah. With uh, the owner of Archie's, or Arnold's, rather, the Happy Days uh, Diner. That was pretty good how now they staged that. Not often you can have a uh, concert like that at Arnold's. <laughs> There's a call strike to Kerry Jones, nothing in one. So we're into the bottom of the fifth. The Rays have no runs on six hits. The Marlins have no runs on one hit. You know what I like, though? And this is going to sound petty, but I'm telling you, National League Baseball, the base hit by Jose Molina. That's a big hit at the end of the day. And there's a base hit through the shift on the right side by Garrett Jones. He hit that ball hard, was able to elude Ben Zobrist out there playing a deep second base. But the reason why I like it is because it got Chris Archer to the plate. And even though the Rays weren't able to do anything there, and Chris would ground out to end the inning, you start with the leadoff man hitting next inning and not your pitcher leading off an inning. That is always huge when it comes to National League style of baseball. We'll see if the Rays can do something with it. Three defenders on the right side of the infield, and it doesn't matter. Garrett Jones hits it through the ship for a leadoff single. Here's Marcel Azuna. Swings through that slider. That's what struck him out his first time up. Yep, and, and when he struck out on that pitch, he pulled off of it badly. It was off the end of it, his bat. He really didn't have a chance at it. And so Chris Archer remembering that. Jose Molina behind the plate remembering that. They're going to continue to exploit that pitch. And that's a great number there. 12 out of 15. You get the jump in the count. Put yourself right in control. Woo. There's nothing in two. Archer's been right around the dish. And he's done something tonight a little bit better than he has in some of his starts as he's been getting ahead and staying ahead, not messing around ahead 0-2, 1-2, trying to finish off hitters within three or four pitches. No, we, we always talk about I know Jim Hickey puts a lot of uh, emphasis on it, but the 1-1 count, getting to 1-2 as opposed to 2-1, and one, that's big for every pitcher out there, really. But some, it plays more than others. Archer's one of those guys. In the 1-1 swing pitch, if he gets to 2-1 and one or 1-2, one and two, the on-base percentage against him is 216. If he goes to 2-1, and one, anything after that, the on-base percentage is at 492. Almost half the base runners, when he goes 2-1, and one, will reach base eventually. It's a big deal for him. This time he goes 0-2 to 2-2. Two two. Molina thought they may have had that 0-2 pitch close enough for a call third. And, and I don't disagree with him. That, that ball looked to be right at the top of the strike zone. Been calling the ball down tonight. A little inconsistent on the ball that's up, but I thought that that definitely clipped the top of the zone. So now it's two and two. Jones not a threat to run. Swing and a miss. There's that slider. It's gotten Azuna twice now. That is strikeout number six on the night for Chris Archer. And there's nothing in the swing of Ozuna that tells you that he's making the adjustment at all. It has been the same swing. He's missed it by about the same amount each and every time. So when you see that from a hitter, you know you can continue to go to that pitch. Adjustment not been made through the first two ABs. Runner on first with one out. And the shortstop for the Marlins, Adini Echevarri, is the hitter. Archer with the familiar stripes every time he pitches. You know, I've heard you in previous and early games that you really enjoy when the eight hitter gets a hit with two outs because it brings the pitcher up and then you start with the leadoff hitter. Well, yeah. Well, here's what here's what I don't understand. Like, you talk about pitchers being athletes that right. catch pop-ups. You shouldn't be called off. Well, Why can't the they get a hit as, as a hitter? You like them defensively. 
pitchers can hit sometimes. Hey, listen, if you're going to make your money on pitchers leading off innings, <laughs> you're not going to get too many leadoff runners out there. That just that those are the numbers. And this guy's had a stolen base attempt too, which is fine. But then let him get a hit with Molina on and get an inning going there. Okay. But but I'm telling you that 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 would be something that would be you know guys would. Oh, feel good about that in the dugout if you got that eight hole hitter to get a base hit with two outs now maybe your pitcher does something maybe he doesn't but at least you had the lead off man I remember as a pitcher when you got to two outs and the eight hole hitter up you were you talking about bearing down because you wanted that pitcher leading off that next inning that gives you an automatic advantage now that's not to say he wouldn't get a hit off of you but right your odds go way up of getting that lead off man out the next inning the eight hole can be a troublesome spot in the National League. I think Ryan Hannigan dealt with that last year at times because a lot of times if you are in an RBI situation, they'll pitch around you to get to the pitcher. But in the case you're talking about two outs, nobody on, you go after that eight hitter, you should get decent pitches to hit. Yeah, there's no question. That That's when you really want to make your uh, make your move, and Jose Molina did just that. Garrett Jones on first base, one out. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Marlins have a single in the fourth, the leadoff hit by Ed Lucas a little flare to right and then the leadoff hit in this inning by Garrett Jones and that's it. One other base runner was a walk to lead off the game Christian Yelich. There is a base hit past James Loney into right field Jones will stop at second. And the Marlins have two runners aboard for the first time tonight. Well a nice job of hitting right there at Chavaria that ball away from him he just gets the barrel out there you know when you get these pitchers like Archer that have the good velocity you just try to get the barrel to the baseball put a good swing the ball's going to jump off the bat if you catch it clean that's going to bring Jim Hickey to the mound and now you know with the Marlins first and second here and one out but you're coming up at the bottom of the order Jeff Mathis you know, over the course of his career has not been a very strong hitter and then you got the pitcher spot and he's a good hitter. Two, we, 245 career. And we saw those swings. He's an aggressive hitter. And Chris Archer's got a slider he'd like to introduce him to. <laughs> Already done that once. But big part of the game right now. Scoreless. Got to make sure everybody's on the same page defensively and with pitch selection. Jeff Mathis getting a chance to play on a more regular basis now. Jared Saltalamakia on the seven day disabled list with concussion symptoms and still suffering from those symptoms. And Mike Redmond said today before the game that it's going to be three or four days after those symptoms abate before Saltalamakia can do any baseball related activities. So he may be on more than just a seven day list. We'll see how that plays out. Mathis takes a called strike. Their other catcher called up from double A is JT Real Muto has not yet made an appearance in a major league game. So Mathis bats here first and second. The Marlins getting a runner to second base for the first time tonight against Chris Archer. And Chris ahead nothing to do. Yeah well that just completely overmatched Mathis on that pitch. Late action taking it down and in and Jeff Mathis. Swinging out and over the top of that. I was thinking about with Escobar trying to run on Alvarez just a moment ago. They were teammates in Toronto. Yeah, well, you know something. They may, he may have noticed something along the way. That's right. Playing defense behind them. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. One, two, three, and three strikes on Mathis. And there's two away here in the fifth. That was impressive after the mouth meeting by Jim Hickey. Well, he, he made that look easy. You know, Jeff Mathis, he's a career 197 hitter. And so he got ahead of him, expanded for strike two, and blew him away for strike three. So here's Alvarez hitting 167 coming in this season, but as we mentioned before, 245 in his career, including a home run. So this is not a guy you can just flip fastballs in the middle of the plate too. No, you, you've got a pitch to him, no question. But Chris obviously more than capable. There's a slider to start the sequence. Yeah, well, you, the, the swing that he took when he struck out on that slider in his first at bat, remembered by Chris Archer, he starts him off with one there, gets a similar type of swing. At that pitch, when Chris Archer executes his slider, it is 
so tough to barrel up. It's tough to make contact with when he throws it where he wants to. In the air, on the line, base hit to center. Kiermaier's got a gun. They're going to hold Jones. The throw goes through, but a solid single to center by Henderson Alvarez. And now the bases are loaded. Well, and, and the Rays had him defense properly. Kiermaier was shading a little bit towards right center. Obviously with the thought of Chris Archer being a big velocity guy. His pitch is away. A really good swing by Henderson Alvarez. Gets right to it. Hammers that ball up the middle. But it got out to Kiermaier so quickly that Garrett Jones had no chance. Watch right here. Kiermaier's already throwing as Jones is touching third. Absolutely no chance to send him there. He'd have gotten in the run down. It would not even been a play at the plate. So now bases are loaded for Christian Yelich. Strike one. You know, it's been base hit, strikeout, base hit, strikeout, base hit. Let's hope the trend continues. Yelich has had five at bats this year with the bases loaded. He's two for five. In the air, slicing. That'll be foul. DeJesus gives it a look. Nothing in two. Seven strikeouts in the game so far by Archer. Four hits allowed, three of them in this inning. Doesn't need a strikeout, but he'll take one. Just needs an out here to keep this game knotted. Nothing to nothing. That's too far outside. Doesn't get a chase there. And that's one of the issues that Archer would like to improve. 0 2 counts on the season. Hitters are taking 62% of his 0 2 pitches. So when he is throwing pitches 0 2, he's not getting chases like that one. That was too far outside. Yeah, that's why. It's a non competitive pitch. And, and so that that fastball right out of the hand Christian Yelich was like that's ball. So he's not even going to remotely you want to get a guy to chase you got to present it as a strike and then have it moving off the plate make it close. That one right there not close either. And that's the point that you were making. I, I mean that's a, that's a perfect illustration of it. The 0 2 pitch that you want just off away. Maybe he'll expand the zone. But when it's that far off it's a moot point. Well, he didn't want that last pitch down and it missed up. So he's missed his location with his last two. See if he can make his quality pitch here. Counts even at two with the bases loaded. That was a slider that's fouled away. Yeah, and this is your action count. This is where you, Chris Archer wants to make something happen. You know, if he misses here and goes to 3 2, the base runners are going to get a running start. He's got to pretty much throw that ball over the plate. It's a scoreless game. You don't want to walk in a run, so you're going to have to. Give Yelich a strike. Here is where you want to end this at bat. Close. Missed the corner, and now the count's full. Boy, that was a backdoor slider and a you know a good pitch by Archer, a better job by Yelich to not go after it because that was close, closer than I think Fox tracks. Has it right there. A little bit more enticing, but Yelich able to lay off. And now, this is where you're going to get your running start. You got to throw a strike. Tried to go slider on the corner again, and he missed. And that's a bases loaded walk for the game's first run. Nick Carapaza hearing it from Joe Madden, but that may have been just off. Yeah, I think it was almost in the same spot as the previous pitch, and it's, it, it is clearly off the plate. I, I mean, you know, it's close. It's close, but that's the right call. And Yelich again in a full count where wow. you know he's got to protect, wants to swing the bat, and willing to take the walk, and that's what he gets. I still don't know. With 95, 96, 97 at times, why not down and away and say, beat me with my gas? 
I mean, that's a frustrating walk. You're ahead 0-2. Yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating walk after being ahead 0-2, but even to get from 2-2 two and two to the wall. Right. You go slider, slider, trying to... Backdoor slider, trying to trick him. Listen, you've got 95, 96, 97. Say, here it is. What are you going to do? Down and away with my movement. You're not going to do anything with it. That's your mindset. Quite a take by the 22-year-old Yelich as Lucas fouls one away. It's 1-1. One and one. But at, but at the end of the day, you, you were 0-2. You're, you're, two, you're two pitches right after that count, a fastball way up and away, almost a pitch out, and then another fastball way up in the zone, and then you try two backdoor sliders, and he fouled, well, actually, you tried three, he, he, he fouled, fouled one, one off, off, then took the next two. There's one fouled, and you wonder if one led to the other, because he missed really badly with two fastballs. So that does he think, I've all of a sudden lost a little bit of my command with my fastball. Let me try and go slider, slider for the third strike. Maybe three in a row. No, you're, you're maybe yeah, three in a row. I don't, I don't know, but it, that absolutely could happen. And you know, the guy out there on the mound knows best. You know, he knows what he feels comfortable with at the time. You know, it's easy for us to sit up here and you know talk about what should have done or what he could have done. Maybe he didn't feel real good about that pitch, but it's been good for him all night. Trying to limit the damage, misses away two and two. Alina was what. set up closer inside, and he may have fooled Carapazzo yeah. with where that ball ended up. It's the presentation. He's set up in. This ball's away, but you can clearly Ooh. see it's over the plate. I mean, that right there is strike three. That is a, a miss by the young umpire who called every pitch correctly in the previous at bat. That's the one you get upset about, not the not the three-two backdoor slider that didn't get called. This should end the inning, though. Zobrist. Loney. So one run scores in the inning for the Marlins. We head to the sixth, and it's one nothing in favor of the fish. In. Well, the, this right here, the second inning starts off well. Evan Longoria hammers one to center. James Loney follows that up. Now you got first and second, nobody out, and a 3-0 count on Matt Joyce, but Alvarez would come back and get him with the strikeout. And then, jam you know Escobar, a double play to end it. You go to the third inning. Okay, looks like it's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. Kevin Kiermaier says, forget that. I'm going to hammer this ball, get it down off the wall, get into third base, a run around third, two outs, and then a good pitch here by Alvarez. It gets Ben Zobers to reach, takes all the sting out of that swing, and he grounds out to shortstop, and the Rays, a couple more missed opportunities, and that has been the story of really the road trip, but specifically the last five games now into the sixth. Very well said. Here's the leadoff hitter, Kevin Kiermaier, butting one foul. And think about the the two key moments in each of those sequences you had as you said first and second nobody out and a 3-0 count nothing not even a runner to third until the inning ended and on the other side the Marlins have first and second pitcher due up and then after he gets a hit 0-2 on the leadoff hitter and they still work something out 
that's one thing the Rays have not been able to do is scratch for runs and not for lack of effort. They're just not getting the, getting any timely hits. Their runners in scoring position coming into tonight 0 for 19. They went 0 for 2 in that second inning, 0 for 1 in the third inning. And that's it, 0 for 22 so far in their last 22 tries with runners in scoring position. Kiermaier down on the count, 1 and 2. They get runners on. One guy was thrown out trying to be aggressive, taking advantage of his former teammate who was yeah. posing around the back of the mound. That didn't work out. Another, De Jesus, was thrown out trying to steal with Evan Lagori at the plate. Kiermaier chases there. And that is a strikeout for Henderson Alvarez. That is only his third strikeout of the night, but kind of par for the course. We mentioned earlier, doesn't strike out a lot of hitters. Great new way to experience Rays baseball with the Rays Flex Packs. Three, six, nine game packs offer fantastic savings and allow you to select any game you'd like during the season. To purchase your Flex Pack, call 888 Fan Rays or go to RaysBaseball.com. Zobras fouls went off his heel, nothing in one. And again, those Flex Packs are good for any game the remainder of the season. You've got 18 to choose from in the next 21 games. Very popular, too. They are. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. I love the fact no blackout dates. I like the fact that you can put money on it and use it as a credit card. I've seen you do it. Well, I've seen you do it. I've seen you out at the by, board by Brown. exchanging. Can't deny that. It's great. It's great. And you get discounts too. Certain concession items, different nights, discounts. It's all good. It, it, as people learn more about it, yeah. they'll, they'll be more and more. The people that have it love it. I, I, people rebuy them all the time. Yep. I, I would agree. I, I love the whole idea of it. And then it gets you out to the ballpark, and then you can take a look at the walk around mm -hmm. from left field line to right field line. You got the porch out there, which is your your hangout. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> you I have absolutely taken ownership of that place. I need to get a little area set aside, but yes, I do enjoy the porch. <laughs> two and two, the count to Ben Zobris. Todd Callis feeling in for Dwayne Stats. He'll be back in the chair tomorrow when we're back at Tropicana Field. Alvarez all of a sudden has struck out Kiermaier and Zobris back to back to add to his total. Only two strikeouts coming in, now four in the game. Well, 90 miles an hour, and that looked like the changeup from Alvarez. A lot of late action on that right there. Look at that. He's able to keep it middle of the plate and get Ben Zobris to swing over the top of it. Two quick outs. Direction five of the game had three coming into the inning. Has struck out Kiermaier twice, Zobris once now, Lagoria and Matt Joyce. Here is David De Jesus, singled, was caught stealing his last time up, one for two. Ray's looking for some offense here in what has been a very difficult road trip. 0 and 7 coming into tonight. They were 0-7 one other time in 2006 when they went to Anaheim and Minnesota. They went 0-7. They have never had a road trip worse than that. Here's a ball hit hard, but Lucas spears it to his left. Nice play by the Marlins second baseman. Kind of the way things are going for the Rays. They hit a ball hard. Defender makes a nice play. Giancarlo Stanton will lead things off when we come back. In the bottom half of the sixth inning, it's the Marlins one and the Rays nothing.
for the Marlins. He can hit a baseball a long way. Well, just take a look. Don't go there. Yeah, no, don't let him get full extension. This is what happens. That's ridiculous. Wow. 484. 484. Archer starts him off with a slider called strike. Yeah, stay out of that area, too. Five of his 16 home runs over 450 feet. There are no teams in Major League Baseball with that many. Other than the Marlins because of this guy. There's the landing area of the Budweiser bar. 427 feet to the front of that. He hit it over the bar. Yeah, and, and you don't even get a real feel for how far that is away until you're sitting where we are. It's out there. A couple of fun spots here at Marlins Park. That's definitely one of them. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Stanton. And there is Chris Archer slicing and dicing up John Carlos Stanton. He's the focus. He's the focus of this Rays pitching staff. And they are so very good at shutting down powerful hitters like Stanton. And that was a tremendous slider. He threw a get me over for strike one and then two nasty ones to put him away. So one out, that'll bring up Casey McGee. McGee has struck out and grounded into a double play. The lone run of this game came in the last inning on a bases loaded walk to Christian Yelich. It was a plate appearance in which Yelich was behind in the count, nothing in two. And Archer ended up walking him on a couple of close sliders that Yelich took that were just outside. There's a call strike on the outer half, nothing in one. That's one of those examples of how Jose Molina, how he's able to receive a pitch. That right. probably was not a strike or very borderline, but the way that he receives it on that edge, it gets the call for Archer. He can save some strikes. Look at that play by Archer. He has been working on his agility drills extensively with Kevin Barr, the strength and conditioning coach for the Rays, and that's one of the things they work with. The comebacker, and he's dived off the mound a few times this year, and that was one of his better plays. Yeah, quick twitch right here. Robbing hits McGee, trying to go back up the middle, and he's able to, you know, probably if you look at it right there, Ben Sobers is probably going to be able to make that play, but Archer, too quick with the glove. He does it himself. Nice play by the Rays pitcher. Two outs, nobody aboard. Here's Garrett Jones. He scored the only run on that bases loaded walk and he swings at the first pitch and James Loney has it. How about that inning for Chris Archer after a 28 pitch fifth inning. He strikes out Jean Carlos Stanton on three and only needs six total in the inning. and James Loney is due up second. I talked to Loney earlier today about consistency in the Rays offense. Well, I mean, consistency is tough, you know, especially in 162 games. You're going to have so many ups and downs, so many streaks. So, uh, you know, just putting together good at-bats, that's what we want to do, you know. 
pitchers trying to do their job too. You know, they they do their job a lot more than you know we 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 do ours successfully. So, uh, you know, for us, it's just uh, you know finding ways to score runs. Well, Loney batting 382 when he's behind in the count, guys. And when you talk about consistent batters in the major leagues, you look up that picture and it's James Loney in the dictionary. Yeah, he is solid. Doesn't matter what the count is. It's Evan Lagori hits one to right, sending Stanton back to the track, and he reaches out and makes the play in front of the wall. John Carlos Stanton had to cover some ground there. Evan Longoria put a charge into it the other way, and he made a nice over the shoulder catch right before. Coming into contact with the wall that ball away and Evan doesn't try to pull it. He lets it come into the zone and shoots it out there, but it plays big out in right center field and Stanton's able to track it down. It goes from 335 down the line all the way out to 392 at the edge of the Marlins bullpen. That, Huge. that is big field. That is a big field here. Here's James Loney who you just heard from. There's that slow curve. He did that to Loney the last time. That was 56 miles an hour. Last time it was a 60 mile an hour pitch. So he's picked out Loney as the guy he's going to drop that really slow hook on. Well, he he would be the one guy that I would try to screw up his timing too because he's such a a solid hitter as far as his approach, ability to use the entire field. And how about this? Seventh inning or later, the bell is ringing and he answers. Ahead 2 and 0. Oh. There's another seventh inning or later base hit on cue. That wasn't scalded. A little flare to left, but that'll work. And base runners, that's all you're looking for. Down a run, you need base runners. And James Loney, I'm telling you, he just in big spots, runners in scoring position late in games. This is the guy that gets it done. That's how baseball works sometimes. Longoria hits one about 365 feet, line drive out, and then you hit one about 200 feet. Right off the end. Off the end. Base hit. Well, the Rays need something going on right now. They're down one nothing. Archer's pitched well, and now here's Matt Joyce with Loney on first and one out. John takes his one swing, one bad pitch. This is a guy that does not give up many home runs, though. And a ground ball back to the mound. Alvarez, Echeverria, and the double play. Inning ending double play. We head to the seventh inning stretch at Marlins Park, and the frustration continues for the Rays offense down 1 0. Look at our T-Mobile game changer. Well, it's been the Rays' opportunities, and right here, in the bottom of the, or top of the second inning, Yanel Escobar runners on first and second, grounds into an inning-ending double play, and then right here, runner on, one out, Matt Joyce right back to Henderson Alvarez. He makes the throw to Echeverria. Two double plays there for the Rays. 
Boy, it's tough. And, and I, you know, you, you got to think these guys have got to be beside themselves. The inability to put something together and when something good gets going, we talked about the Rays, really the inability this year to turn the double play. They've not been as proficient as they have in the past, but boy, have they hit into a ton and in a lot of big spots. Well, Alvarez gets a lot of ground balls. His ground ball percentage is in the top 10 in the major leagues. He's got some key double plays tonight, as we just showed you. 10 of his 21 outs have been on the ground. Two have been on the bases, five strikeouts, and four in the air. That's what makes those guys that have good sinkers so difficult to deal with because they, they can give up a couple of hits, but they're always still just one pitch away from getting those two outs. So here's Chris Archer working into the seventh inning, and more than likely this will be Archer's last inning, not because of pitch count necessarily. He's at 85 to start the inning. But more because he's due up third in the next inning. Unfortunately, that's the one downside to pitching in the National League. Sometimes it's not always about how you're pitching, it's where your spot in the order comes up. There you see Jim Hickey on the phone. The bullpen phones for the visitors are right next to the Clevelander. That used to be the home bullpen. There's a called strike, two and two. And ostensibly, the reason they changed was so they would have a better view from the dugout to their own bullpen. But speaking of views, there are also views from that bullpen in the Clevelander <laughs> yeah. that could yeah. have been distracting. I think that that had a whole lot more to do with it than being able to see it from the dugout. In the air to right center field, that's going to fall for a base hit. Nice job by Kiermaier cutting it off. His throw is wide, and that is going to allow Marcel Azuna to get into second base. Well, you, you just wonder if Kiermaier would have been able to just for a split second set his feet because, boy, he's got a strong arm. He did a great job, number one, to get to that ball. That ball looked like it was going to make it to the wall out there in right center field. Kiermaier able to cut it off with the speed. But then you see right there the wild throw as he spun. You know, he's trying to make a play, too. And it was offline, and that's what Ozuna what allowed him to get up to second base. Unfortunate right there because it was a nice effort by Kiermaier. So a leadoff double for the Marlins here in the seventh. The fifth inning was the only other inning where the Marlins have had a runner reach at least as far as second base as you see Joel Peralta start to loosen in the Rays bullpen. You know, it looked like Marcelo Zuno was going to push the envelope anyway, regardless of the throw. So Kiermaier, understanding that he's going to spin like that, he really almost didn't have a choice. He just had to hope for the best, hope it was online, because Ozuna, I think, was going anyway. Corners in, expecting a bunt. No sign of the bunt from Echeverria as he swings away. No, and Echeverria, his last at bat, he got a pitch away, shot the hole on the right side. Echeverria does not have a sacrifice bunt this year. Line drive caught in the air by Escobar. Double play for the Rays. That was caught about a foot off the ground, and they turned two as Ozuna was on the move on the line drive. Well, very fortunate there. Echeverria put a pretty good swing on a tough pitch, hit the ball hard, but you know, Escobar, watch him right here. And I mean just above the ground. You see Chris Archer hopping off that mound, understanding what a big play. This gets by. Yeah, right there. He understands. He's thinking maybe that was a base hit to give up another run. Instead, it's turned into a double play. Well, Rays pitchers are very aware right now of what's happening offensively for Tampa Bay. They know they need to keep this at one nothing, no more than two nothing. You don't want to have your team with two shots at it needing to come from behind by very much. No, no, you got to keep it with it right here. This this one run, give yourself a shot to come back. Should get it right here. Longoria nicely to his left, and the Rays end up getting out of a jam. A leadoff double is wiped out by a double play, and then a ground out to end the inning. Eighth inning baseball when we come back. One nothing Marlins.
Arkansas, Chris Archer, Henderson Alvarez. Two young righties looking to light up the radar gun and the Miami Knight. If you like electricity, if you still believe in the power of the fastball that certain people possess a special type of magic in their arm, then tonight is for you. Chris Archer, seven innings. Henderson Alvarez, seven innings. One run allowed on a bases loaded walk. Alvarez coming off a shortened start where he left with right elbow tightness. He thought, I wonder if the Rays are going to see Alvarez. Well, he's fine, obviously, dealing tonight with those seven shutout. As the first batter he will face is Yunel Escobar in the eighth, but he kind of started and stopped his delivery. He and Escobar have had an interesting night so far. Escobar grounded into a double play his first time up. Then Uni had a base hit his last time up and tried to take second while Alvarez was on the mound before the next hitter was thrown out. Ground ball towards the hole. Great diving stop. McGee cannot make the play as Escobar goes in head first and infield hit. Here go the Rays again with a leadoff base runner. They had a leadoff runner in the second, in the fourth, and now here in the eighth. Yeah, and, and with the frustration level building, you got to make something happen here. A nice job by McGee to get to that ball, but Escobar, who was hustling right out of the box, no chance to make a play. Marlins have bullpen action going as Alvarez is approaching the 100 pitch plateau. Started the inning with 94. Jose Molina, a base hit his last time up and two at bats. Molina swinging the bat actually pretty well the second half of this road trip. Had three base hits in Toronto, getting the start a lot more with the injury to Ryan Hannigan. Molina's going to show Bunt here. Bunt's it back to the pitcher. They may have a play at second. They do, and out at first as well. Bunting into a double play to wipe out the leadoff base runner here in the eighth. We're seeing everything tonight. Yeah, I, I mean, this is really is so unfortunate. I mean, Henderson Alvarez bounces off the mound quick. This ball bounced high into the air off the plate. It got to him quick, and that's what allowed this play to happen. Escobar going in at second does not wipe out Echeverria out there and he's able to stay on the bag and make the throw a strong enough throw to get Molina. You know you think of if Escobar could have got out there and maybe flipped him but he ended up sliding into the bag that allowed Echeverria to stay on the bag and get enough on the throw to complete the double play. Well, here's a look at it right here watch the throw right here Escobar going in. But he slides to the front of the bag. And Escobar himself was taken out of a double play possibility earlier tonight. Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich sliding into the first inning. So here's Jennings. We mentioned earlier he has good numbers against Alvarez. Four for ten with a couple of bombs. There you see in his numbers. Joe Madden does have lefties. But he knows that Jennings has hit Alvarez, but this time he pops him up. On the infield, Echeverria calls off Lucas, and a leadoff base runner is wiped out, and the Rays go down. So we head to the bottom of the eighth. It's still a one run game.
by 22 Jump Street in theaters June 13th. And by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Visit us at Publix.com. Back at Marlins Park, 1-0 in favor of the home team. As we head to the bottom half of the eighth inning, new pitcher for the Rays. Where's number 62, Joel Peralta? Well, Peralta on for the 27th time, 24 innings of work, 24 strikeouts to go along with it. And imperative for the Rays' sake that he keeps the Marlins lead right now at one. First batter he will face is the pitcher who's going to stay in this game, Henderson Alvarez. Alvarez has already gone eight innings. and won the count to the pitcher. He had a single in that run scoring fifth inning for the Marlins. Yeah, well, he was the guy that extended that inning. First and second with two outs. He gets a fastball elevated out over the plate, shoots it into center field. That would load the bases, and eventually Christian Yelich would walk, and that would lead to the only run in this game. Talked about it coming in. He can swing the bat. Career 245 hitter coming in in that range. He's thrown 81 pitches. 81 in eight innings. He's thrown That's not a typo? Inning. No, I thought it was a typo. That's why I checked. I thought that was a mistake on the board. But, but here's the thing, and, and, and that's a ridiculous number. That's a ridiculous number, but not a big strikeout guy, even though he has five. Gets a lot of early contact, right. keeps the ball on the ground. He came in averaging 14.2 since he's become a Marlin. So we're talking about a year and a couple of months. There's probably a part of Mike Redmond that wouldn't mind if he does not get on base here. You want the extra run, but it's your pitcher. And probably wouldn't mind not seeing that swing. He goes, he's always entertaining. Henderson Alvarez. Not going to get cheated, that is for sure. And there's the split. And there's a the split. <laughs> Last year, when he pitches no hitter, against the Tigers and there you see it again oh he thought he had his no hitter after the top of the night because he pitched nine innings and he was ready to celebrate and then he realized his team hadn't scored yet and so he goes back he's actually on deck with the bases loaded in two outs bottom of the ninth he's on deck to go back out there for the 10th they don't score and a wild pitch scores a run and they celebrate a no hitter with a walk off wild pitch first time that has ever happened as far back as 1900 when stats were kept. Incredible. Really. Uh, they mobbed the guy on deck. Yeah. <laughs> After a wild pitch to walk it off. Well, here we go with one out in the top of the order. Christian Yelich, who had the big plate appearance of this game when he walked his last time up. Peralta 0-2 has these Marlins missing that changeup. Alvarez likes pitching against the American League since he's joined the Marlins. I mean, think about it. He had that, that no-hitter against the Tigers. And in April 19th, he throws a complete game shutout. Two-hitter. Two -hitter against the Seattle. Seattle Mariners. And then right now has an opportunity to do the same against the Rays. Let's take a look at this. Last game of the season last year against the Tigers. See that? All third strike. Teams that don't see him very often. Nice play there. Always got to get some help. And there it is. Oh, he, see him yeah, raise his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See him raise his hands top of the ninth. He thought it was over. And then there's the pitch that got away and scores the winning run. And there he is on deck. 99 pitches through nine. That's why he was going back out there for the tenth. And tonight, 81 pitches through eight. Peralta, meanwhile, is just dealing. To the Marlins hitters who haven't seen him very often. Struck out Alvarez, struck out Yelich. Now he's ahead 0 1 on Ed Lucas. You look ahead to the Rays in the ninth, they will have the top of the order due up. They're 
closer is a right hander Steve Ciszek. But right now it's the starters game Henderson Alvarez. Don't forget tomorrow our. Mazda Wednesday showdown it's going to be David Price on the mound against Tom Kohler for the Marlins and it is a web Wednesday get your questions ready to hashtag Sun Sports Rays or email them to Sun Sports Rays at gmail.com. So top of the order for the Rays means Kevin Kiermaier Ben Zobris David DeJesus and if it goes further than that Evan Longoria. We're all ahead of Ed Lucas nothing in two. You don't want to have any road trip end being skunked 0 and 8. And you especially don't want to have this road trip end in a 1 0 loss. 6 5 would have been at least pet more palatable if you could get some offense going, but the offense has been stagnant for this long stretch here, the last yep. five, now six games. You just want to see something happen for the Rays here in the ninth inning. See if the top of the order can get anything going, but first Peralta has to get Lucas, who stays alive by fouling one back. Well, this is a road trip that is now well into its eighth game. In fact, you're running out of time. You're coming into the ninth inning. And the Rays will hit next, and they've scored 17 runs, and 11 of those came on day one and day two. Right. So it has been a long stretch, and really, this road trip, what, what's it been? Eight games over nine days, and it's felt like about. Three weeks. I mean, I'm not kidding. Well, this is the third three city trip for the Rays. So they feel like they've been on the road a long time this year. Quick pitch fouled off. And that's why you would love to win this game and then you go home and you're home almost the entire month of June. And they're going to see Tropicana Field an awful lot. And even their one road trip in the midst of an eight game and a ten game homestand is a quick three. Three gamer to Houston. That's right. Back and forth. That's right. In and, and out. One of the easiest places to get to from Tampa Bay. So this is the time where the Rays have to make a push, but it's coming on the heels of what has been to this point a dismal road trip. One and two the count. Fought it off, but fought it off to the second baseman Ben Zober. So the Rays will be down one going to the ninth with the top of their order due up, and Henderson Alvarez will try and continue this masterpiece. He's got an eight-hit shutout going on. They raise, they may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. And as we promised you earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. We ask you to tweet your photo to hashtag Sunsports fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. That right now is the leader in the clubhouse. Best one. Ninth inning, one nothing game. Henderson Alvarez trying to continue his dominance in interleague play. Over his last three starts, he has now gone 26 innings, allowed 10 hits, and no runs. 
Kiermaier in the air to center. Azuna will come in and make the play for the first down. Now, that, what Henderson Alvarez can do in this situation is pitch to the ballpark now. You know, he's down here one swing, and look at look at how efficient that he's got once he got to the seventh, eighth, ninth inning still in play here. But five and ten total pitches in the seventh and eighth innings. That two, is ridiculous. Two double plays in those innings helped him out. He has three double plays on the evening. And here's Ben Zobris. Only 83 pitches, 12 in the last three innings. That's now 13 as he misses low to Ben, 1 0. Sobers looking for his first hit tonight. On the ground, should be easy for Lucas. Two outs. Only four pitches so far this inning, so 14 pitches to get the last eight outs. I mean, you you can't you, you can't be any more efficient than that. Not 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 eight outs in, 14 pitches. 14 pitches is his inning high in tonight's game. He has been absolutely fantastic. It's up to David DeJesus to keep things alive. He does have one hit tonight. He does have two hits in his career against Alvarez. One of them a home run. Again, this guy gives up fewer home runs per nine than anybody. In a starting rotation since last year, there's a called strike. Well, and, and and Henderson Alvarez, if he was smart, you just stay middle of the plate away. If David De Jesus, you, if he's going to hurt you, you make him hurt you to left field. Don't give him anything where he can pull one, because we've seen David De Jesus mistakes middle of the plate, middle in. He can hurt you, and that's why I say pitch to the ballpark. It's so big and expansive. You have such a good sinker. You make hitters in this situation beat you the other way. In the air to center. Azuna is there. Drifts back slightly. And Henderson Alvarez has his third consecutive shutout in interleague play. A no hitter last year against the Tigers. A two-hit shutout earlier this season against the Mariners. And now an eight-hit shutout against the Rays. And he needed just 88 pitches to go the distance. The Rays end up with their worst road trip in team history. The numbers are on your screen. They were 0-8.